I took in the Vancouver International Jazz Festival this weekend for about 17 minutes. Solo piano, noon, 10 blocks from my house. What did I hope to accomplish? I would arrive and be seated near the piano. The music would move me. I would be swayed towards other. Else, a return or new. A man would notice me for exactly who I am. He would instigate and engage. I was once proposed to on a first date. Engage in profound conversation. Mm. His gaze would set off a dense thudding in my lower abdomen, and I would squirm. He would notice and respond. We would spill out onto the sunny sidewalk and tripping off to privacy, we would only get a quarter of the way down the block before it was time to kiss again. The encounter would result in a profound inclination towards an ongoing exploration, punctuated by fundamentally audible kennings of knowing, the internal trill of potential, mutually defined reconfiguration to love, to be loved. And this did not happen again. I left the house in a transparent dress with a slip that rode up too high. This was happening as I strode in sandals flat under a snug pink corduroy coat mid-calf that soon would be too hot. I decided to return to the house to change into something I felt better about myself in. Square-toed boots, jeans, studded black belt, citron tank top with a very short, woolly, double-breasted gray jacket. Yes. I was early. The waitress seated me at a table for two near the back. No one of interest, to me, was there. I switched glasses to read The Oyster Catcher, an anarchist, surrealist zine I'd been given. I checked out the menu. Boring brunch. Bagel and cream cheese, three dollars. Fuck off. Fuck off. Fuck you, you stupid fucking bagel. I hate you and your stupid boiled chewiness, greased with white muck, meant to be understood as acceptable. Cream cheese my ass. A fucking craft product out of a king-sized tub sitting out open on the counter beyond those swinging galley doors, no doubt. I was sure the coffee would be bad. The musician arrived with coffee from elsewhere to confirm this near fact. I ordered water. Two women in their late fifties sat directly in front of me. The only attribute of this arrangement was they blocked my view of a young husband, new mother, baby, and one set of grandparents. The baby was new. New, young, small. It would have been the couple's first. The mother looked to be rather unused to pushing her face into something like a smile. But she knew she was supposed to make this face a facsimile of a smile for the baby to see, for the grandparents to see, to complete some strange part of a ritual that seemed very far from anyone's actual truth. The woman directly in front of me, gray hair, blunt bangs, overly big glasses, was very confident in her indelicate dealings with a pleasant enough waitress, suggesting to me that she had never been regarded favorably by anyone. I was trying to imagine how, unless through some form of forgetfulness, which is possible, a woman her age could go forth into a restaurant with such a large quotient of insensitivity. She didn't appear to be wealthy, Maybe she grew up on a farm without mirrors, more miles from men than were possible to travel for the purpose of courtship. Perhaps all the other girls of the region were somehow more desirable, 
and while not loathsome in any exact way, she just didn't measure up in the field. These were my thoughts, anyway. As I watched her face and listened to her voice as she explained, head tilted, bangs now hanging at new angles to the waitress, that she was gluten intolerant and her breakfast had arrived, splayed uselessly across soggy toast. I'll get very, very, very sick if I eat anything that has come into contact with gluten, she is saying her knife and fork motionless above her plate in mock horror at the discovery of the killer toast. Elbows up and out, and it really does seem like she believes the waitress should care about this more than anything happening in her own life. The waitress herself might be about to get very, very, very sick of people telling her things she really doesn't want to know. And then there's the pretending to care that must follow. Mostly it's the pretending. That's what gets to her, the waitress. Most. <laughs>